let's talk a little bit about case interview frameworks. So the framework happens after the initial question, but before the real meat of the case. And if you wanna know where the framework fits into the overall flow of a case interview, we have a really interesting video that lays out essentially a flow chart or map on going from the case interview question to the answer. So when you get to this point, you're expected to tell the interviewer as well as provide a map of how you're going to approach the problem in an efficient way. Right, because as consultants, it's not like when you're in school and the teacher will say, we're now going to learn about derivatives. Here's some information about derivatives and here's some homework where you can practice derivatives. It's very different. No one's necessarily gonna tell you the type of tools you need to solve that problem. So let's go back and think why we use frameworks. When you do a case, you're simulating a real business problem. That business problem can literally go in hundreds, if not thousands of directions. For example, let's say you have a case and your client is losing money, right? Well, maybe your client is losing money because their customer acquisition costs are too high for a specific segment and they should focus on a more profitable segment. Or maybe your client's manufacturing facilities are outdated and they need to invest in some new automation technology to compete effectively. So in a case interview, you're not expected to be a fortune teller and know exactly where the case is going to go right off the bat. That would be impossible unless you are a fortune teller. And furthermore, if you're actually a fortune teller and can guess where a case is going to go because you can see the future, please do not go into consulting. You should definitely go into asset management or something that involves more explicitly taking bets. So why use a framework? You use it primarily for two reasons. One, it helps you categorize and test different hypotheses in a structured and organized manner. The alternative to this is often throwing out a laundry list of hypotheses. Now, sometimes some hypotheses are dependent upon other hypotheses. Now, we'll get into that a little bit later in the video, but by being very structured and organizing your hypotheses in a logical manner prevents you from going down certain rabbit holes that are avoidable. Now, there's another second reason for using a framework in a case interview. Since we know and have already established that the case can go in many different directions, some directions you're most likely not even going to touch during the case. For example, in the situation of a profitability problem, if the challenge is revenue focused, and let's say it's a pricing issue, or let's say it's focused on growth, you're not really going to go into some of the specifics of cost. However, if you put in your framework different hypotheses that are entirely plausible and reasonable, it's like you get credit that you thought of the main likely hypotheses that were not actually done in the case. So let's make this real. And we're gonna have more videos about frameworks. Let's start off and make this solid with a case that is not business related and something that everybody has solved. Your client is your friend, Lily. While hanging out on a Sunday afternoon, you both notice that familiar feeling of hunger coming on. Neither of you know exactly what you should eat. You've been hired to determine what you two should eat for lunch. Now this is your case prompt. So how might you go about solving this case? Let's talk about two approaches. One approach is to just start naming every restaurant you can think of. So you might say, should we eat at Chili's? Pizza Hut? Should we get wings? Should we get delivery? How far do we wanna drive? Should we fly somewhere? As you can tell, this is not recommended. It's unstructured, it's inefficient. And by the time you pick a restaurant, you're probably going to be very hungry and angry. You'll be hangry. Another approach is to take a step back and think about what are the potential drivers of the decision and then drill down. For example, you and your friend might care about the type of food. Do you want burgers, Mexican food, sushi? You might also care about the price. You might care about the location, the ambiance. By keeping a structured approach, you can answer the question much more quickly. So you might say, all right, what kind of food do we want? Sushi? Yes, let's get sushi, okay. So now you've just cut out a lot of different restaurants and a lot of situations, because now you know you want sushi. So you say, oh, do you want something close by? Yeah, let's say we want something in walking distance. Okay, so now you've limited to sushi restaurants in walking distance. Do you want something expensive? No, let's do something cheap. Okay, let's go to Sushi Town, which is five minutes away and less than $10 a roll. Bam, there you go. By doing this, you're able to narrow down your hypotheses until you got to what was really driving the problem and what you really wanted to do. In a lot of ways, your case interview is very similar to this. And actually, a lot of the cases, the real business cases that you're going to work on when you're at a consulting firm are going to be similar in the sense that you're gonna start with a broad, ambiguous problem, 
And then you're going to systematically narrow down the solution set by testing hypotheses. So let's talk about next steps. Go ahead and try and create a framework for how you might approach this problem or any other basic life problem that you're facing. The way you do it is you think about what could be driving an answer, organize those drivers, develop hypotheses for each driver that you'd like to test during the case, iterate, and then dive deeper. Now, obviously this gets more complicated but we use frameworks all the time in our everyday lives. And the more you practice this structured approach, the more likely you'll build a solid foundation for structured problem solving, and the more likely that case interviews, and then subsequently the cases that you work on as a consultant will feel like a breeze. So here's some fun exercises for you to practice at home, right now, after this video. And what I want you to do is Go through this process of think about what's going to drive the answer and then organize your hypotheses and organize your questions. So for example, where should you go on vacation? What type of computer should you buy? The list is truly endless. And I think if you're early on in the case process, practice answering these questions in a structured way and try to do this in your everyday life. And if you have further questions about case interviews, consulting, check out Consulting Confidant. We have additional courses, free resources, and opportunities to have practice cases, mock interviews, and advice from people who used to work at some of the top consulting firms like BCG, Bain, and McKinsey.